Hey guys, this is Adrenaline Junkie. Thanks for checking out another video. This one was filmed at the 2019 Dungannon Mud Bog. It's an all day ride, so it's going to be a longer video. I'm breaking it up into two parts. Head on over to a Shopify store, get yourself some sweet swag, some stickers. Also, don't forget to subscribe on the channel, follow us on Instagram, like us on Facebook, and check out some of our other content. Now hang on and enjoy the ride. Hey guys, Adrenaline Junkie here. Thanks for coming back for part two of the Dungannon Mudbog ride. If you haven't checked out the first part yet, then head on over to the channel and watch that first. We're picking up where we left off in the previous video. We just finished lunch, watched some of the guys go through the mud pit. Now we're heading back onto the trails and we're gonna keep on riding. Oh damn! Yeah! Oh my god! Get it! Oh damn! That water's pretty quick. <laughs> that is sketchy. What are we about to do, Julian? Yeah, we're about to cross some high speed water. This is sketchy. Alright. If it doesn't wash him away, we're okay. Oh, we're fine. We'll be fine. Dude, right? that's so cool. That's rad. All right, we're gonna get it. We're gonna get it. Oh yeah. Oh, we're getting it. We're getting it. Machine's nice and clean. Yeah. Fit excited Lou and I were when we went through that big creek crossing there going through high speed deep moving water like that is sketchy I mean it, it doesn't seem that bad on the video but you can feel the water moving your whole machine 
It almost feels as if it's gonna wash the razor right away. It was actually probably one of my favorite obstacles of the whole ride. There's just something about deep water crossings or long water crossings that make things exciting. And it's just a good reminder of where these machines can really take you. The capabilities of these newer side-by-sides and even some of the older ones and the ATVs out now are just wild. Like, for people that have never been out, sometimes when you take them out for their first ride and, and they see what you can drive up or drive through, it's just mind-blowing. When you first get into this segment of the sport, then one of the biggest things you need to do is kind of mentally train yourself about how you look at an obstacle and you think to yourself, something that, that looks like you can't even make it through is actually pretty easy and you can just idle up in four-wheel drive. major upgrades I think you should do to any machine if you plan on riding it hard or you want to increase its reliability out on the trail is definitely upgrading to an aftermarket skid plate. The stock belly pans are not really skid plates, they're usually just plastic, thin plastic covers that keep debris out from underneath your vehicle. They're not really designed to sustain any, like repeated large hits from stuff like rocks or big logs, especially when they get cold, especially if you ride aggressively. This is my third season running the Rival Power Sports all aluminum skid plate. Uh, it's a really good unit. Um, aluminum skid plates are strong, uh, th they work well. Um, however, in hindsight, I think that the best material out on the market right now for skid plates is running like an UHMW skid plate or like a hybrid design that incorporates UHMW and aluminum. The UHMW slides over obstacles better, it's quieter, it doesn't dent. It's a really good material and there's some really wicked options out on the market right now that um, will really protect your machine and also look pretty cool. Oftentimes, the UHMW skid plates might cost a little bit more over aluminum these days, but in the long term, they probably are the better option. Leave a comment below the video and let other viewers know which skid plate you've been running and what your results using it are.
according to Cam, that last high speed section there was his version of slowing down. So we're just gonna wait here for the rest of the group to catch up and hang out. Here we go. Yeah, dude. So we're here at chill spot number five, six. We lost count. We're just chilling. Super chill day. Everyone's having a good time. Razor got the clean from that river crossing. Our fin trail gear is keeping us nice and dry. We get some bangers. Got a crew coming through. Get it, yeah, boy, yeah. is always a lot of fun not just because of the scenery but also because of the variation of machines that come out there's such a wide variety of different equipment out here on this ride that it really makes it a lot of fun to look at what everyone's riding and see how they all perform speaking of performing what's going on here cam what's wrong with the razor yeah yeah i know this is the moment all you can am guys have been waiting for Yeah. It's the wheel bearing grenade. 
Oh, grenade it completely. We can't even do anything without. Even a wheel bearing wouldn't fix it. Watch no, that. Yeah. Before you could lost an axle on a wheel. Yeah. You were lost an axle, wheel, wheel. arms, yeah. Watch out. We got enough seats. One of you guys will jump in in the three seater. What Cam will jump in somewhere else. Oh, yikes. And we'll mm. go to dinner and oh. tell them where it is. How did that happen? Yeah, uh, check it out from the rear. The rear bearing just exploded. Check it out. You can oh, see all the shrapnel. Look, yeah, look at the shrapnel. Oh. Really oh, <laughs> Mine's really close to doing the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Yikes. Was it loose before you came out, or no? Everything seems solid. Yeah. Last year, uh, when we flew up to CF Moto, Shelby jumped in with someone else, and then as soon as they saw like one of the organizer people or whatever, they let them know. And then before we were done dinner, they had already picked up the machine and dropped it off at the fire hall. And then we got the trailer, we drove to the fire hall, loaded up her machine, and just. Did nope. you guys keep the phone number? Uh, I have Wayne's number, the guy who organizes the event. Well, I got the phone number for the tow truck. Yeah. Oh, for like perfect. the tow truck for here. Well, they'll, you just yeah. call them and they come pick up the oh, machine. Oh, it's on account. that piece of paper I didn't yeah. read. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, for emergencies or if you are lost, please contact. Should we call them then? Yeah. yeah. Right Whoever's got a phone. Okay, I got I'll a phone. I'll figure out where we are. Okay. We're about 40 minutes by trail from lunch. That's all go. I know. Let's do, do you have location services? We can find the closest. We can drop a pin. We can, can send it to them. We can either do that or we can just see what the closest road is. Because mm. at this point it's still mobile, so they can probably get it on the trailer, no problem. Depending on how far they have to take it, right? Google Maps. We got a road up, so we're... Right in the middle. Yeah, we're right in the middle of it. <laughs> Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message. <laughs> Six, one, three, three. We see them break down right away. Yeah. <laughs> it is a four-wheel drive. Drive this It's a Can-Am now, three-wheel drive. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come on, at least the tires stay on the Can-Ams, all right? Well, most of the time, right? <laughs> I was going to say, uh, I don't want to ride with you anymore. <laughs> if you kept them under control, this wouldn't have happened. Just go slow.
we're in a good clear area and not tight deep in the thicker trails down there. Yeah, the, the, the brand, uh, it's right there, yeah. Oh, there it's got no brakes either. Oh jeez, see the little bearings in there, little balls. Oh, damn. So I think the plan is to cut a tree down create a makeshift ski and we're gonna try to ratchet strap it to cat machine and get it out of here. Ski? <laughs> oh, we need that chainsaw again. Oh, What's that? She's got the tow guy. Where are we? Uh, what was that road we were on? Egan. Egan. Uh, Egan. Egan or something. Rip. Egan rip. What was it? Do you have your phone? Yeah. And screenshot the coordinates to yeah. this number. Oh, I can't. Yeah. Kind of hand off. Will they come in? There? Will you guys be able to come like oh. anywhere and get it? Yeah, we've already been to lunch. We're about like 40 yeah. minutes past the lunch area. We're on a trail in like a big clearing right now. We have room, like we can take the people with us and leave it here. And then where will it be at the fire hall? Like at the dinner place? Is that where you told them? Yeah, it's it's totally dead. Like uh, it won't run or anything. You can tow it. Like it it runs. It's the back wheel assembly that blew apart. So uh, the right side it still rolls, but uh, the humbling uh, the hub assembly is all blown apart. Okay, then yeah, you can send me a screenshot. Screenshot them the details coordinates. Okay, and you guys will come out to the bush and get it. Yeah. Okay. And then what, bring it back to the fire station for me? Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, we'll do that. Thank you. Thank you. They're going to come get it right here. I have to look up like... Not right now. Oh, no, probably. They said we have to be patient. Yeah, it's an hour, they, they said, probably, because they're doing nothing. Yeah, well, it's not no, 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 that's pretty good. Yeah. 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 Call them back? Yeah, let's call them yeah, back. Do you want one guy to stay with the machine with the key, or...? Yeah. I know everybody's a nice guy. Or do you want us just to light the match and I, I could use you're going to come put it out? <laughs> yeah, these are nice wheels. These wheels are nice. Hey, <laughs> Put slots in it too, but we're gonna carve it. Right. Yeah. That 
way you're riding on the beach. Trail side or pairs done. Making a sled from this log. That's great. I say just finish the ride, right, man. What do you got for, uh... What do you need? You need 27 mil. 27? Well, if I can... Oh, oh you're just seeing the cow. And then I can change... You can't... Oh, that's... Yeah. Do you have the... Remember, no reverse. No reverse! <laughs> Twin. Still good. Oh, yeah, your ah, spring wash is still good. Don't lose it. Oh, fuck. Garbage. So it doesn't matter if you drag it down. Nope. That's for sure. It really doesn't. You just lose. saved a rotor. Yeah. And your axles. <laughs> your boots <laughs> off, so it's. The axles. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You want to get it? Get in there. Yeah. yeah. This guy's in. Is it? I don't know. And it's really not that bad of a ride out.
you guys are seeing now is us trying to make the best of a bad situation. Unfortunately, stuff like this is just part of the game. Party wagon. Obviously the log ski idea didn't work this time. We've had luck with it in the past, but he snagged something and it just tore it all off. It was pretty tough. Now we're gonna try and lift the front end up and use another machine to tow him out instead, kind of like a tow truck scenario. You can't let stuff like this get you down or drop morale. You just kind of got to put your heads together and make the best of the situation and come up with a solution that works. It's just one of the aspects of going out on rides like this. You have to deal with unexpected circumstances and you've got to take advantage of that critical thinking and your problem solving skills. Oh man, that thing's covered. <laughs> they got that trail crutch thing. Yeah. He would have been able What's to literally word? drive right out. What's it work? I don't know, but I'm gonna email them and say we need one. You're touching tire. You're touching tire. Hey, no crossing swords. You guys are you guys are crossing swords. Okay. Tire on tire. You need uh you need something in between the bumpers. is actually working well. The party bus is also the tow truck. Yeah. Okay, we'll double back. There's yeah. no sense of us all going that way. Yeah. I'm hungry. <laughs> yeah, me too. I'm hungry. I still want to get a little bit of a fix. Yeah. Well, well that was fucking, that was pretty creative. Yeah, it was. We're going to cook this way then. Yeah. Usually in the cold, I wasn't expecting it. What I actually do for my battery box there, I like slap two heat warm hand warmers. That's such a good in idea. A and it keeps the core temperature up, so the batteries are healthier, right? Because yep. lithium ions hate the cold. Yeah, they do. Any battery does. a success we got cam's razor hooked up to andrew's razor 4 and they're safely heading back towards the road to wait for a tow now it's just down to two of us ginger and i are gonna keep ripping down the trail and work our way towards the fire station and get they don't need us there anyways at this point yeah no, well they're they're the road. and we gotta get some footage up and dinner and we've done our share yeah, you did. That thing is like grenaded. Yeah, dude. Like, I could tell it was gonna go earlier. I didn't on. see it. You, told, you said the axle. I kept looking at it, yeah. and I didn't realize. Like I didn't notice. You know what I mean? It was like. Yeah, I just I wasn't paying attention. But to that. it was both his wheels doing this too, though. At some point. So. I'm assuming the other one's probably bad too. I yeah. would be surprised.
do you think that would cost to fix everything? About a thousand bucks. Yeah, I think so.
was awesome. That was gnarly. That was awesome, yeah. Skin plates got the workout. conditions are deteriorating in a lot of the muddy spots. Um, we lost about an hour and a half trying to get Cam back on the trail, so there's quite a few more people in front of us now. alarm ginger thought he heard some sort of weird noise but turns out everything's okay you heard us mentioning there that we were both at about two bars of fuel so we're starting to run low on fuel here we got quite a ways to go yet.
like stop you from hitting your elbows too. or the Mavericks have a way of making even obstacles that would be quite technical or difficult on an ATV or an older machine seem pretty easy these days. Um, sometimes it's kind of funny because sometimes it, it makes some of the obstacles almost a little bit too easy um, and, and having a little bit less of a machine can make certain trails that are easy in, in like a Razor Turbo that's set up this way a lot more technical and, and at times maybe even a bit more fun than having a machine that's overbuilt for the kind of riding you're doing. certain trails on my old ATVs that were really tough and technical and there were sections there that were pretty sketchy and then when you go back and you hit them in a razor or something you almost don't even feel like you're on a trail you're just idling through everything.
are stuck in the bog. Unfortunately, we start running into some camera issues here. So you guys know I shoot with a bunch of different cameras. Um, this was her first time out recording with the new GoPro 7. Um, we found out that there's a lot of glitchy issues with the GoPro 7s as well as the GoPro 8s. They just do not like the cold. Um, this was a colder ride and pretty much the batteries just can't keep up. Uh, the GoPro 7s and 8s, especially when you have the hyper smooth stabilization on, really draw a lot of battery and so do the processors. So um, they're very sensitive to voltage drops like low temperature and if you're below like 50% battery, oftentimes they will glitch out on you and freeze. They'll continue recording audio but the video will stop as you'll see. So we did lose some good footage here and we're gonna lose a little bit more along the way which is really unfortunate. I never ran into the freezing issue on my GoPro 5 or 6 or any cameras below that and I read online that this is a big issue with the newer GoPros which is really disappointing and there's no way to fix it. What's that? Yeah, I'm not going in there though. No. A lot more comfortable. What's that? Yeah, it is. A lot less work on the body. With age comes a cage. A couple of the guys here next to me were joking around saying that it must be a lot more comfortable riding in my nice big side by side rather than on an ATV. And I mean, hey, yeah, it is true. It's a lot easier on the body being in a side by side, especially on long multi day rides, uh, which is why I always joke about saying with age comes a cage. Slimy and slick, but we're having a really good time. Lou, you having a really good time? 
they add damage resistance, you know. You gotta rock that Team AJP gear. Yeah. All the proceeds go directly towards making more videos. So uh, check it out. Show everybody you're an adrenaline junkie. Yeah. Look at this. Now back to the action.
problem. Well, I don't know about no problem, but I'm sure they made it. Oh, so. <laughs> well, that last setup was good. Yeah, the last setup was freaking good. Yeah, at least it didn't happen like here, you know? Oh my, oh man. Yeah, it actually did happen in a relatively decent location. Yeah. And it's good it didn't grenade when he was ripping so fast. Yeah, really. Or his wheel would have ripped off in a drift. Yeah. Unfortunately, there is some bad news. This is the last Dungannon mud bog you guys will ever see. Unfortunately, an event that would have been going into its 16th season has been cancelled now. The event coordinators were not able to secure the liability insurance that they needed for next season, as well as receiving multiple complaints, mostly from environmental-based groups, making claims that events like this are not good for the trail systems or the environment. It's quite unfortunate since it was such a great event that raised money for a great cause. Black Mamba has probably broke something. Uh -huh.
first time. And then there's the fire department? Yeah. yeah. Two minutes. Well, I can't keep up at that speed. We cracked our rim or put a hole in it somehow. Do <laughs> that. How do you get there? Great. Good. Julian's gonna have to weld that up. And uh, for now, we're gonna have to putt back. That way? GoPro's kind of glitching out. We don't know why. Well, unfortunately, we uh, blew a hole through the rim on the driver's side front, so we're running flat right now. We didn't have a spare. Cam had it on his machine, but we made it through 95% of the ride scot-free. We actually did run out of fuel, basically, but there was some guys on the trail from the Dungannon Mud Bog um, Volunteer Firefighters Association that were topping people up free of charge since a lot of people were running low near the end of the ride and um, we did manage to make it back here. We road burned the last 10 minutes and uh, destroyed the rim and tire in the process, but hey, whatever. Uh, oh cool, look at that. There's ATV and his uh, Can-Am Renegade on his truck there. Make sure you guys check out his channel. He's good stuff. I can't wait to ride with him, hopefully sometime this season. So anyways, we made it back here to the Dungannon Fire Hall. We're gonna stop here and we are gonna have some dinner and then we're gonna make our way back to camp on our flat tire. Stay tuned, we're not done yet. We're still gonna get a few shots at dinner, then back at camp when Cam's machine gets dropped off. We'll show you some of the damage and the carnage, and um, we'll just do a little bit of a summary and, and kind of the trip home and stuff like that. All in all, it's been a wicked day, a wicked ride. Always an awesome trip. It's a real bummer we won't get to do this again this spring. Oops, broke my rib. Oh, look at it smoking. Yeah. Uh, it happened two minutes from the road. My tire is garbage. Oh, yeah. It's cooked. Touch it, Lou. Like, hold it. Yeah, I imagine it's all delaminated. Inside, yeah. It'll be cool to see what it looks like when, oh, we, when we peel it. Oh, so we just finished dinner. Duh. Julian's still going. Got Round ice two. Cream. Round two of ice cream. With, yeah. with some beans, some corn. Technical KO, a TKO on the tire. Some roast beef. TKO on the rim. Some itis. TKO on other things uh, that have a diet. Some rec rims. Yeah, we're just itis out now. Just Epic freaking day. I don't care that I just ruined a $300 rim and a $250 tire. And I don't even know what else. No, no. You know what? Better than what Cam did. Oh. <laughs> well, we gotta go rescue Sorry, Cam, Cam now. <laughs> like, I think it's time to go rescue him after we finish this meal. Yeah, we're gonna see. We're not taking my razor, though. No, no. We're getting your truck? It's on a sled trail, though. I can't get my truck. Oh, out. yeah, that's right. We're gonna see where he is, and then yeah. we're gonna see if we can help him. Yeah. All right. I think we'll I have to find out what's going on or where he is. Yeah. Well, we'll check back later when we figure out what we're doing. Blew up my rim. And I ruined my tire driving 20 kilometers on the road. Andrew's prize. One, so they can take it for me. Girl size gloves? They look like girl size gloves <laughs> and a girl size shirt. Got there, Julian. Got Andrew's prize. His girl size gloves and his girly size shirt. <laughs> that both went through it. So, nice this is what costs are flat. So, we're back now. We're riding all day. I've had my gauge on. My average temperature is about 153 degrees, and the highest I got was 224. So not too bad. Gauge looks good. Got the tire damage here, as I said earlier. I think I might have destroyed that tire too. <laughs> and yeah, we're gonna get comfy, get out of this clothes. What do you think, Lou? Yeah, man. It's and time then, to wind down. And then we'll do a little concluding video once we're kind of more comfortable and 
wind down a bit. Yeah. Anyways, wicked ride, bro. Boom. Bye, everybody. Well, Cam's trailer just got here. Or, I mean, Cam's razor with the ripped off wheel. So, we're gonna go help get it unloaded and see what the carnage is like. We waited like five hours before they um, <coughs> ended up getting them off the trail. She wouldn't fire up? Frozen! Frozen. Do we have any ramps? Oh, would you come down to film work? Yeah, bud. I gotta remind you. Yeah, thanks. We need to show something at your funeral. Yeah, yeah. Twice. Yeah, I was here when that happened. Yeah. They installed one and then that one caught on fire. Yeah. It's like, what are the odds of that? Yeah. So I think we should probably get them to jack the ass end up, put the f***ing hub assembly back on it real quick. Okay. He's good at, he's good at messing up. <laughs> Like I mentioned, Cam had to wait about five hours until they finally picked him up off the side of the road with his machine broken down. I guess near the end of the ride there, there was a lot of machines that were KO'd and needed help getting off the trail. Like you guys saw, my tire was flat. I'll show you a shot of the rim later when we get home. And um, basically by the time I got back to the Dungannon Fire Hall, the tire was like smoking. Um, it was that hot. The whole tire was wavy. Everything was delaminated inside. It was just, it was poop. It's toast. So is the rim. But I wasn't about to wait a few hours to get picked up. So I just said, you know what? whatever it's cost of doing business and I just gave her all the way back fried that thing at that time of the day dinner was just more important and it's nothing a trip to Royal Distributing can't fix obviously you can see Cam's issues are a little bit more severe here but you know what all that's important is he's back safe and I uh, can worry about getting that fixed when he gets home you're good on this side Perfect. So we got Cam's machine on loaded off the trailer and then we all got to work to get that wheel back on good enough so that he could push it into the trailer tomorrow morning and then kind of get it out and into his shop once he got home. Like I mentioned out on the trail, and I'm sure a lot of you guys know when things break down or when people run into issues, it's just a team effort. You know, we bust chops all the time and we, we give each other a hard time out on the trail or even when we're broken down, but at the end of the day when we need to come back together and get something done or get someone out of a sticky situation, we just team up, we put our heads together and we get what we need to get done. We go out as a team and we come back as a team. You never leave a man down. Even if you don't know someone on the trail, oftentimes you'll end up pulling over, helping him out. It's just part of the off-road brotherhood and living that off-road life. In the end, we're all out there to have fun and do what we love. Up we the, survived. Yep, wrapping up the mud bog. The bog, and mud bog Yo, this amazing. GoPro 7. Yep. I was looking at some footage last night when you were like passed out. Lou, we wore him right out. Oh. Wore him right out. Like a baby. 13 hours. 13 hours? We're ready for more. So the machine, it took a few, took a few battle scars, but we had rock dust on it yesterday. Remember that? Yeah. I wonder if it's still there. Oh yeah, we still got some rock dust here, I think. No, uh, I think it's gone now. Oh, the uh, the the exo cage, the Super ATV full protection kit, isn't it awesome? Bouncing off the trees, was, using it as a pivot point. It's really good to use the pivot point. Like we used the rock as a pivot point at one point. Yeah, but like it worked really well. Nothing damaged the machine. Our buddy Adam's machine had a flaring. Kind His, of his fender ripped, ripped, right, ripped, off, ripped yeah. right off. Yeah. This is the only real visible damage at the moment, which yeah. uh, is actually only the rim, not the tire, but. Now that the tire's cooled off, it doesn't look so bad. It I'm gonna, doesn't. I'm There's no more waving. There was yeah, really crazy I think it's waves. just because it was so hot. It was it was steaming up a bit. Yeah, I'm gonna. When we parked this thing yesterday, it was for like steaming up from all the heat generated from the side. I'm gonna the I'm gonna see if I can once I get a new rim. I'm gonna weld this one up as a spare. Hi guys. How are you? 
yeah. We're just getting ready to load up. Yeah. No, no, I'm looking for a car. Uh, um, Dave down there. Yeah, I got some. Well, the battle wagon survived another ride. The gentleman that just pulled up in the other side by side you just saw is Andrew's dad. He owns the campsite here. And um, he was just saying that there's a few guys in some of the other camp spots that wanted some of our cards so they could find the YouTube channel and check out the video once it's up. It's wild how much prep and planning can go into a ride like this, even a one day ride, um, because you gotta prep the machine, get yourself down here, then get back and get the machine back into tip top shape before the next ride. But I'm sure most of you guys know all about that. We're just gonna go get the Razor loaded up on the trailer now, get all the gear in the truck, and then we're gonna slowly work our way towards hitting the highway. We got about a three and a half to four hour drive back to my place, and then we just gotta unload it there, and then Lou's gonna pack up and he's gonna head home. He lives about 45 minutes from my place. Oh, the icicle's still there. Yeah. Last icicle of the season hanging on there. Running out of fuel, and uh, we almost ran out of fuel, but the guys from the Duncan and Mud 
Bong actually gave us some gas, which was really nice. They were waiting at the one one uh, crossroads, asking if people needed fuel. So we got a we got a few extra liters of juice to keep us going. And uh, we had a, I mean, Cam had a little bit of bad luck with that rear wheel bearing failing on him. But like we said, Andrew saved the day, getting him out of there. We tried a few things, as you guys saw in the video, but it easier said than done sometimes. That's a cool sled. That's yeah. Yeah. I thought it would work better, yeah. but hey, whatever. Um, I had a little bit of bad luck just at the very end of the ride where we went into that sloppy mud hole and I popped a, I got a rock stuck between like either the caliper and the rotor and the rim. We popped a hole in the inside of the rim, so it wasn't holding there. We didn't have a spare because Cam had the spare tire for our machines. Yo, shout out to Adam, aka Ginger, for getting that ass out of there. Oh though. man, that little 900 ass oh. pulled us out of that mud. I didn't think it would pull us out of that mud. I didn't hole. think it was going to get us out either. It took everything to get us out of there. I don't Thank actually you. think we have much video footage of it happening, but we got a front shot of it. But the only reason we got out of that hole is because that 900 S. And then pulling um, its heart out. The crappiest part of the day was definitely knowing that we had no spare tire and it was a 20 kilometer road ride back to the fire hall. So I had to road ride 20 kilometers on the road with a flat tire. So I may have potentially cooked one of my ITP Blackwater Evos. I'm hoping it's still good enough that I can uh, salvage it as maybe a spare tire. Um, I'm gonna check that out. See once I get it. Once I, I might actually weld up that KMC rim too because it's just got a little pinhole in it. Yeah, it's not so big. It's not a big hole. Yeah, I can, I can lay a bead. I mean, uh, I can lay a spot weld in there. Yeah. The spool gun or the TIG. And hopefully I can fix that rim. Good enough for a spare. For Obviously sure. Obviously not for like my main wheel. It would have saved our tire though if we had it yesterday for that 20 kilometers home. What, the spare? The spare, yeah. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. But I mean, you guys know how hard it is with storage space on a longer ride on a Razor. I mean, there's only so much you can fit. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, spare tire is an important thing to have, but two other guys had spare tires, so it's like we didn't expect things to go down the way they did, which is part of the game. That's off-roading. You, you gotta kind of take the good with the bad, make the best of all the situations, work as a team, you know? Yeah, it's brotherhood, sure. never leave a man down. Never. You go in with a group, you come out with a group, even if they're limping or you gotta carry them out make sure everyone makes it back to camp where you left and uh, I'd like, I, I mean I'm pretty stoked to say that we all work together as a team to solve all the problems we have and uh, yeah I mean generally speaking great event anyways won't bore you with too much more of the talk and once we get home we'll unload the machine and then uh, tomorrow I'll probably shoot a few more shots before I wash it do a little bit of a walk around I'll get the wheel off and show you guys the carnage and the damage so uh, if you like the video make sure you give us a thumbs up make sure you subscribe to the channel make sure you follow the Instagram page and the Facebook page and also check out some of our other content and uh, leave us a comment below let us know what you like what you didn't like let us know if you were at this ride or if you've been there in the past or if you're thinking about going and also make sure you check out some of that sweet team AJP swag you can find that on the Shopify store and the links gonna be at the bottom of the video here uh, and I'll also put a link in the description so uh, you can get some cool stickers, you can get some shirts, some, some stuff like that. And um, you can represent the channel and the fact that you're an adrenaline junkie by uh, representing the brand through some of our swag. And like I say in all the other videos, any proceeds generated from the swag or the stickers or the videos goes directly back into acquiring more camera gear, stuff like that. It goes all back into the channel and uh, we use it to provide better quality content and uh, I'm always working on trying to improve the production quality and the content and I use your feedback as viewers to, um, to kind of fine tune all the videos into the future and make them even more enjoyable for you guys to watch. So make sure you share that content on social media. He's gonna rip it. Yo, yeah, thanks man. Yo, follow us on YouTube. Give us a rip. Yo, you like gangster rap? We want to record with you, bro. <laughs> I need your car for the video. Yeah. Oh, I hope we catch up to him again. Man, that backfire, that backfire Dude, on that yeah, yeah. on that uh, on that Benz was hot. I got a sweet spot for German engineering. I'm I don't think Lou's opposed to it himself. I'm gonna get a Benz one day. Yeah, my dad's got a sweet Benz. Shout out to the Hondas everywhere. Ah. <laughs> Lou's a Civic driver. Yo, type R driver. There's a difference. Type R swap. Type R is for reliability, everybody. That's the only reason why. I mean, oh, is that what the R stands for? Oh, reliability. Yeah, reliability, yeah. 
And respect. And, <laughs> and, uh, and like red line. Nine, oh yeah. 9,000 red line. Yeah. Woo! I love it. Definitely. You guys hear that? Ford life. Crack, cracked exhaust manifolds for the win. 4.6 liters of fury. Oh yeah. It's getting better flow. It fully deletes the two cats that come before the lead. Yeah, it's a it's an exhaust bypass. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely improves your ability and efficiency of burning more fuel. So I burn through gas way faster than I would before. Totally efficient at killing the world. Just like a race car. Yeah. Like all real race Everything's cars. Everything's just like a race car except the looks, the performance, and the sound. That's it. Everything yeah. else is like a race car. I wonder what people are thinking here in the big city when they see my machine. That oh, I'm like thought that guy's changing lanes and this one's a Oh, more like that guy's yeah. a redneck. <laughs> With his camo shirt. How, how much more stereotypical can you get? They think you probably killed some animal with that thing and like I'm calling an animal somewhere. Oh yeah, in the back of the truck yeah. there's dead, dead animals, yeah. yeah. They probably yeah. think we got guns. There ain't somewhere. no tofu in this truck. They think we got guns like Americans. America. America. Shout out to all our American fans. Yeah, we love guns. <laughs> yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. And West Virginia. Julian loves West Virginia. I love the South. Oh, he loves the South. But I love Southern barbecue. I love, thing. you know what? It's not fair to say I just love West Virginia. I, I love West Virginia. I love the Carolinas. Yeah. I love Tennessee. I love every freaking state I've been to. I love, I love Virginia. Uh, man, I mean, Utah. I love Utah. Uh, I mean, what's not to love about all those places? I want to go ride in New Hampshire. I want to go ride in in in, uh, in um, Montana. Like, I, I want to go everywhere. I, I've been in Kentucky. I love Kentucky. America, America, yeah. freedom country. Yeah, we love our freedom. We love freedom country. And then there's Canada and Mr. Justin Trudeau. Let's just end the video on that. I'm gonna go cry. A bunch of people have asked me how I secure my machine onto the trailer. And I like to use these Imi cargo buckles. They're the same company that makes the seat belts and the retractable harnesses for Polaris and Can Am models. So um, these are called like quick buckles, and I've got them hard mounted to my trailer, and it's insane. You can load or unload your machine in literally like a minute. So let's unload this baby real time. So you get to your machine, it's time to unload. If you're using ramps, you position your ramps, and then they auto retract back into themselves. And you do the back. Release them both. They've released because I've taken the tension off the front. Done. You're ready to unload. That's it. What was that? Like 30 seconds? You're ready to drive off the trailer. And I mean loading up, for example. You unlock them both. You connect one, you connect the other. You crank down, ready to go. Same on the front. So it doesn't take much time at all to load or unload these things. No worrying about tying up your ratchet straps or getting dealing with the loose ends or anything like that. They're super heavy duty, they got grade eight hardware in there. The really nice piece. Hopefully your machine doesn't have a flat tire. But if it does, you probably had a good time. Or a really bad time. She's ready for the least fun part of every ride. It's the wash. And she's a dirty girl. So we got a lot of mud caked on this one. Nothing the foam cannon and the pressure washer can't handle though. Yeah, I guess next step would be pre-rinsing this girl, getting her all washed up, and then the last step of every ride is your post-ride inspection, and that's when I go over everything and make sure there's no damage. In this case, I know we've got some damage. Listen to that. Can we see the hole in this one? Yes, we can. Can we? Where is it? Right there. Right there. there we go. Look at that. Size of my finger. So that's our culprit. That's what caused the failure and caused us to have to go 20 kilometers home on the road with a flat tire because we didn't have a spare. But um, 
We got a new sponsor coming on board for this season, which is HMF Engineering. They just sent me a full exhaust system. It's sexy. And that's a turbo back system, so I'm gonna be installing that. And actually, I might be contacting the guys there, and they have this really, really cool spare tire carrier. I think I've just proven myself I need. Because um, it's a $250 tire and a $300 rim, and I think I need to replace both of them. So that's expensive. So as I mentioned, um, when you're washing the machine, it's a really good time to take a look at everything because you're up in there with the pressure washer, really getting every spot. And um, that's usually when I find most of the damage or wear on my machine. So I'm gonna wash her up. So the seats were really comfy too. This was our first ride with the G-Force off-road seats. The harnesses were actually pretty good too. I was, uh, I was a little worried going away from the retractable harness to the fixed harness design again, but they are really comfortable. The padding's really nice. Um, I just kept them a little loose so that I had a bit more movability. I'm gonna see if I can get my any retractable harnesses to work in there. But for the time being, these four point harnesses from G-Force work really nice. Um, the seats held up well. They were comfortable, way more comfortable than stock because uh, I sat in a Razor 1000 for a bit just to move it. And I'm like, oh my God, it's like sitting on plywood. I'm gonna do a nice thorough inspection, make sure there's no other hiding damage. Hope you enjoyed the ride. We had a blast and uh, thumbs up. As always, thank you for checking out the video and supporting the channel. If it wasn't for you guys and our sponsors, a lot of this wouldn't be possible. Big shout out to this episode's sponsors, Rural Distributing, Super ATV, Fintrail Waiting Gear, FXR Racing and FXR Outdoor, GeForce Offroad, as well as Razorback Technology. See you in the next video, and ride safe out there.